Hey, welcome to the channel and thanks for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be talking about something that I have a lot of experience with. Losing weight on a plant-based diet. So stick around for a ridiculously comprehensive guide on how to be successful in doing that. So if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming that you are interested in losing some weight and for some reason you think that eating plant-based is going to help you with that. If that's the case, then you are in the right place because this video is going to help you with all the strategies and tips on how to lose weight eating a plant-based diet and as well as all the benefits that come from doing that. Now you might be wondering, why should I choose a plant-based diet to help me with weight loss? First and foremost, it's naturally low in saturated fats and cholesterol while being high in all the good things like fiber and vitamins and minerals. And this combination works pretty awesome for losing weight because it keeps you full, it optimizes your digestion, which I think we know what that means. And it nourishes your body with all the essential vitamins and minerals that it needs. Not only that, it offers a ridiculously awesome variety of colorful and delicious foods. And it is not a restrictive diet where you need to count your calories and weigh your food to be successful. There's a little bit of that when it comes to specific food items, but we'll get to that later on in the video. In today's video, we're gonna cover some key areas that are gonna help you on this journey. And if you wanna to jump to any of the specific sections, look in the description down below. I got some really awesome chapters that are gonna have the headlines that'll let you jump around as needed. That said, the first time through, I highly recommend you just watch through the video to get an overview. First, I'm gonna tell you why choosing a plant-based lifestyle is the optimum and ideal choice for weight loss. Then we'll dive into some essential tips, which includes things like meal planning, portion control, if you need that, as well as a really comprehensive overview of plant-based protein sources. We're gonna discuss the role of physical activity and exercise and weight loss, debunk some common myths about plant-based weight loss and diet, and I'm gonna share my success story and how I lost half my body weight going plant-based. So if you're ready for some valuable insights, practical tips, and some ass-kicking inspiration, stick around because this is for you. And if you're excited about what's to come, take a second and hit that like button down below and subscribe to this video for more content like this on the channel. And don't be shy about leaving comments down below for anything that you find particularly useful or contradictory to what you've been told before. Let's get into a dialogue with each other. So I was overweight for pretty much my entire life, definitely most of my adult life. At my heaviest, I was around 360 pounds. And it took me a long time to get down to the weight I am today. About 12 years in total. It all started when I, I met my now wife and we got together and started dating, eventually got married. She's a vegetarian, so I went pescatarian, basically. It just made it easier for making meals and all of that kind of stuff. And then slowly over time, I read more, got more educated and started to go vegetarian. That said, I wasn't necessarily losing weight during this time. I lost a little bit because she was more active than I was and so I was more active. But I was still eating lots of processed foods. I was not exercising and moving my body in any meaningful way. It wasn't until I got really serious about wanting to shed those excess pounds that I shifted over to a whole food plant-based lifestyle and lost pretty much half my body weight. And I did that by following all the tips and tricks that I'm gonna share with you in this video. So let's get into the nitty gritty of a plant-based diet and why it's awesome and ideal for losing weight. So the entire concept of a plant-based diet is derived around the idea of eating plant-based foods from sources like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. It emphasizes the power of plant foods and nourishing our bodies and our overall health. Whole food plant-based foods offer three main advantages when it comes to weight loss. Plant-based foods are naturally rich in dietary fiber. What's that mean? It means it's gonna make you feel full a lot longer. It's gonna reduce your hunger and it's gonna regulate your blood sugar levels. That's important because that's the shit that makes you hangry. You know what I mean? You've been hangry before? I used to get hangry a lot. Ask my wife. It also just aids in digestion and supports a really healthy gut microbiome which means you're gonna poop on a regular basis and in a healthy way. You should be pooping every single day. If you're not, your gut is not happy. Most plant-based foods, especially vegetables and fruits, have a low calorie density. What does that mean? It means you get to eat larger portions 
without freaking out about eating too many excess calories. You can fill your plate with nutrient-dense foods and still have a calorie deficit for maintaining weight loss. And when it comes to non-starchy vegetables, so things that aren't like potatoes and corn, you can eat pretty much as much as you want. It's actually practically impossible to overeat non-starchy vegetables. You just get too full, seriously. Try to overeat lettuce, you can't. I mean, you can, you'll be full, but you're not gonna gain weight from doing it. Plant-based diets are packed with essential vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. These nutrients support your overall health and optimize your body's functioning. If you focus on nutrient-dense foods, that means your body's gonna get all the stuff it needs to be healthy and to thrive. Now let's address three common myths surrounding plant-based diets and weight loss. For some reason, people still worry that plant-based diets mean you're not getting enough protein. I, I don't know why we're still talking about this. It's, it's stupid, but, but let's do it. We're here, why not? Buckle in. Through sources like tofu and beans and legumes and tempeh and seitan and even whole grains and fruits and vegetables, there are tons of ways for you to get protein eating a plant-based diet. As long as you're eating a wide variety of foods, you are getting all of the amino acids that your body needs. Seriously, there's protein in pretty much every natural whole food. Some have more than others, obviously, but as human beings, we've done this thing where we decide to put foods in different categories of protein and fat and carbs, when the reality is most foods go into multiple categories. So as long as you're eating a wide variety of plant-based foods, you're going to get everything your body needs, including a shit ton of protein. I've said it in other videos, most of North America gets double the amount of protein that their body actually needs. We live in a protein excess society and we need to just stop freaking out about it. Another ridiculous misconception is that eating plant-based reduces your food choices. There is a world of plant-based foods that is vast and delicious. From colorful fruits and vegetables to grains, legumes, nuts and seeds and plant-based alternatives, there is an abundance of flavors and textures to explore. The key is just to not be lazy and get creative with ingredients and recipes. Hey, I've got a website, pbwj.ca, that is full of awesome, comfort food, plant-based, healthy, delicious foods from breakfast to lunches to dinners to desserts, you name it, and it's super kid approved. Pretty much everything on there is what my family eats on a regular basis. It's good. And if you want some more inspiration, I've been doing a ton of videos where I do cookbook reviews for plant-based and vegan cookbooks, and you can get a sense of other recipes from those as well. And lots of other videos on this channel as well show you some of my recipes. So you got no excuse for thinking that eating this way is boring. It is not. It's delicious and awesome. Some people worry that eating this way can lead to nutrient deficiencies. It really, really doesn't. That's insane. With proper planning, and eating a variety of foods, you're gonna get every single thing you need. Eat the rainbow, meaning, you know, different colors of vegetables and fruits and things. That said, there are a few things you might wanna pay a little bit more attention to. Things like B12. I know that's what a lot of people are gonna say. They're gonna say, well, you can't eat vegan and plant-based because it doesn't naturally have B12. Neither does meat products. You're getting it as a byproduct of eating animals. The animals themselves are just a carrier. It's no different than me taking a little pill. It's the same thing. You st <laughs> drives me nuts. What's the difference? You eat meat to get it, I take a pill to get it. You still don't get it naturally from just sucking up the air. <sighs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get upset there. It just drives me nuts. Things people might think you need to worry about are things like iron and calcium and omega-3s. But honestly, as long as you're eating a wide variety of vegetables and seeds and all the other things I'm talking about in this video, you're gonna be fine. Now let's get into some tips for losing weight loss on a plant-based diet. Eating simply plant-based or vegan is not enough. The point is you gotta eat whole unprocessed foods. You gotta emphasize on vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds. Fill your plate with a wide variety. And remember, half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. Doing that, you're gonna get tons of fiber, minerals, and nutrients, vitamins, all the things. Add to that some legumes like chickpeas or black beans, some quinoa, throw some grains on there like rice or bulgur or farro. 
couscous, brown rice, whatever you're into. Those things are gonna give you all the sustained energy you need. And then you really just wanna eliminate or at least avoid any processed foods. So we're talking about things that have ingredient lists the length of my arm. You know, you know what junk food is. Chips, candy, sugary drinks, all of that kind of stuff. At the very least, keep it out of your house. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth. You can't eat what you can't reach for. If you wanna have a little snack when you go out, some treats when you go out, that's fine, do it, you gotta live your life. But if you're actively trying to lose weight, you have to set yourself up for success by eliminating all of the things that are going to give you those little impulses of like, well, just, let's go to the cupboard and I'll just grab some. Just grab that little piece of chocolate or jelly or a chip or whatever it is. Just, just don't do that to yourself. Don't do it. Be good to yourself. Next up, we're gonna talk about practicing portion control and mindful eating habits. Opt for smaller sized plates and bowls to help you control your portion sizes. This is a mental thing, but we have this idea in our heads that we have to fill our plates with food. Just pick a smaller plate. I used to go with this for my dinner plate. Now I go with this one. Look, and here's the thing. If I'm still hungry after eating this, I can put more on. Same as bowls, pick a smaller bowl when it comes to eating soups and whatnot. You can always add more. Listen to your body's clues when it comes to being actually hungry and actually full. A lot of times people associate boredom with being hungry. Wait until your body is just like desperate for food. It's gonna taste better. When you think you're hungry and it's not time for your next meal, just wait. You're not gonna die. You might get a little hangry. I mean, if you have like a health thing where you've got diabetes and you, you have to worry about insulin levels, obviously do that. But for everyone else, give it a beat. Have some water. Wait a little bit, see what happens. When you do eat, enjoy every single bite. Avoid distractions while you're eating, like watching TV and just other things, and just focus on the food itself when you're starting to lose weight this way. Enjoy every bite. Really try to pay attention to the flavors. And stop before your plate is empty, if you can. Take a few minutes and ask yourselves, do I need another bite? There's a difference between needing another bite and wanting another bite. I get the wanting another bite. Food tastes awesome. But just ask yourself, do I need that next bite? Can I pack the rest of this up and eat it later? You can always eat more, but there's only one natural way for it to come out. Plant-based protein sources are key for weight loss, but they're also key for maintaining your muscle mass, which is gonna help support your overall health and body anyway. So let's discuss 10 plant-based protein sources that are gonna offer you a wide variety of flavors and textures. And also, just because I know people get nerdy about this, I'm gonna tell you how much protein is in each one. Lentils are an excellent source of protein. They have about 18 grams of protein per cup and they are super versatile. You can use them in things like salads, soups, stews, and you can even use them as a meat substitute for things like burgers and tacos. Chickpeas, also known as garbanzo beans, have about 15 grams of protein per cooked cup. These can be great in any dish that you would have rice or beans. They're also good in curries and stews. You can make hummus with it. You can make desserts with it. On my website, I have got a recipe for how to turn chickpeas into like a raw cookie dough type thing. They're also just great roasted and put it on top of salad. Quinoa is a magical complete protein that has all nine essential amino acids. It has eight grams of protein per cooked cup and it's an awesome alternative to things like rice and pasta. You can throw it into some salads, use it as a base for stir fries, or even swap it out with like a pasta dish recipe you've got. Worst case scenario, throw it down as a side dish and put a little lemon on it, some tamari or soy sauce, or a salad dressing seasoning thing, whatever. It's just, it's just delicious and simple and is easily adjusted to whatever flavorings you want. Tofu is a soy-based protein which boasts about 20 grams of protein per cup. This is one of the most versatile ingredients you can have in your meals. And you can get it in different forms from everywhere from extra firm all the way down to like silken and soft tofus. You can just cut it up into squares and fry it or bake it and put it into stir fries or other dishes. You can crumble it up um, and use it as like a egg scramble. You can shred it and put a rub on it 
and bake it and use it the way you would like pork shreds. For the softer varieties, you can put it into a smoothie for a little protein boost. I have a delicious recipe on my website for how to use silken tofu as a chocolate tart recipe. It's my wife's favorite thing in the world and you should be smashing it into your face. Tempeh is another soy product. This one is fermented. It has a bit of a nutty flavor and if you want to get that out, you could steam the tofu before you use it. This is great for making things like bacon by just slicing it up, marinating a little bit, throw some barbecue sauce on and grill it. You could also throw this into a food processor and turn it into things like meatballs, burgers, crumble it and you can use it like a meat sauce. It's packed with protein and has about 30 grams per cup. Edamame are just the soybeans in their pure form and you can usually just buy these frozen in the grocery store and all you have to do is bring them to room temperature. You don't even need to cook them. These are great in any kind of dish. You can throw them into stir fries, throw them into a pasta dish, top them on your salads. And they have 17 grams of protein per cup. Hemp seeds are a powerhouse omega-3 and have 10 grams of protein per ounce. That's right, you don't need much of them. And these things are great. I put these on pretty much every breakfast I have. I just sprinkle them on top of any oatmeal I have, or smoothie bowls, or even toasts I have. And they're great on savory and sweet. So you could throw these on top of salads, or bowls, or whatever you want. Just a little sprinkling will give you a super awesome boost of protein. Chia seeds are another protein-rich superfood, and they have five grams of protein per ounce. These are really, really great to use as an egg substitute in baking. Flaxseed is perfect for this as well. What you want to realize though is that these things are going to soak up liquid and they're going to get bigger and fluffier. So what I really recommend is using these things in bowls and things like your breakfast and, and oatmeals and smoothie bowls, smoothies as well. Great way to just throw them in. You won't even know they're there. Spirulina is a blue-green algae that is highly nutritious and protein rich. This comes in like a powder form and it has four grams of protein per tablespoon. This is great to throw into smoothies or mix into your oatmeal or cookies or baking or anything just to boom up that protein a little bit. All of these proteins are not only packed with your essential amino acids, they're also ridiculously versatile and easy to find in most stores. And they can fit into meals any time of the day from breakfast, lunch, dinners, even snacks and desserts. Healthy fats are an important part of a balanced diet even when you're losing weight. So let's discuss eight plant-based fat sources that are packed with all the fatty acids you need and are gonna keep you nice and full. Avocados are not only rich in monosaturated fats, but they're also a really good source of fiber. Slice it up, put it into your salads, make an avocado toast, throw it into a smoothie. This is also a really good thing that you can put into baked goods by swapping out oil or any other kind of fat that it's asking for. Nuts are also packed in your monosaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. We're talking everything from almonds to walnuts to pistachios to pecans, Brazil nuts. The list goes on and on. They provide a solid amount of fiber and protein and will also keep you nice and full. This is one of the items you want to eat in moderation because they're also packed with calories. A handful is all you need. I'm going to show you what a handful of nuts actually looks like. This is about two tablespoons of nuts, which is roughly 100 calories depending on the nuts. So pour it into your hand, like so. That's awkward for me to hold. Pour it into your hand like so. And if you can close your fist and not see any of them, that's about two tablespoons and that's about 100 calories. Mmm. Flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds are also a really, really amazing source of healthy fats. Particularly your omega-3 fatty acids. They're also high in fiber, are gonna make you feel full. These are the kind of things you can just sprinkle on anything from salads to smoothies to oatmeal. You do you. Olives are rich in monosaturated fats and they're also known for some heart healthy benefits. You can just enjoy olives as a snack, but I love throwing them on top of pasta dishes or any kind of Greek dishes or pretty much any dishes in general. Olives are just awesome. Pizza, pasta, olives. Coconut, coconut milk contains medium chain triglycerides. Essentially, they're a really awesome quick source of energy. 
Coconut is easy to put on top of oatmeal, on top of salads. Coconut milk is something you can easily put into baking. You just swap it out with regular milk. It'll make it creamier as well. You can put a little bit into your oatmeal. Not a ton, again, it's a fat, right? So you wanna limit the amount you're doing and a little goes a long way. How happy are you that I put dark chocolate on this list? Seriously. Now, for something to be considered dark chocolate, we're talking 70% and over. And not only is chocolate rich in monosaturated fats, it's also full of antioxidants. Again, this is something you wanna enjoy in moderation. Just a little square or two is all you need. Chocolate is good for you. <laughs> Soybeans and soy products are also on the fat list. So that's, that's stuff like, you know, our tofus and our tempehs, packed with omega-3 fatty acids. And as we already mentioned, awesome source of protein, super easy to blend them into whatever you're eating from breakfast, dessert to dinner. Seaweed is one of the very few really low calorie fats that you can eat. An amazing source of omega-3 fatty acids. You could throw it into bowls or wraps. You can use it as a wrap itself. You can just pack it as a snack. My kids love having this in their lunches. They've been eating it since they were like old enough to eat anything. We hand them a sheet of nori, loved it. So I know you're thinking fat intake seems a bit counterintuitive when it comes to losing weight and shedding pounds. But it's important to understand that not all fats are created equal. Healthy fats play a vital role in weight management. Here are six reasons why balancing your fat intake is essential for weight loss. Adding fat to your meals is one of the things that's gonna help you feel full. Because fat digests slowly, so it's gonna help curb your cravings and prevent overeating. Some essential vitamins like A, D, E, and K are fat soluble, which means they require a fat source to be able to digest within your body. So that means when you include fats with your vegetables, it's like leveling up. The two things work together and unlock new sources of vitamins and nutrients that get added to your body. Healthy fats are essential for hormone production and regulation. Hormones are important for your appetite control and metabolism. If you contain an adequate amount of fats, it just helps you with your hormone balance. It just does. It's one of the things it does. Fats are a concentrated source of energy. So fats have double the amount of calories per gram when you compare them to things like carbohydrates and protein. So I know what you're saying, I wanna consume less of those things. However, if you're moving your body and adding exercise to your regime of weight loss, having these fats are gonna help you fuel your workouts. They're gonna help you energize yourself. So it's important that you have those in concert with your movement. Restricting fat intake can lead to a reduction in your metabolic rate. What it means is it can put your body into conservation mode. And I know the keto heads out there are gonna say, that's the whole point. But honestly, for long term, it's not good. You don't wanna mess with your metabolism in the long run. Having a healthy amount of fats, come out with all the other things, is gonna keep this little engine, this little fire pit inside of your body burning at a consistent rate. When you start doing weird stuff, like keto and all those other fad diets, your metabolism is doing this ping pong thing that doesn't know what to do with itself. And so it doesn't get in any kind of sense of harmony or rhythm. And that can just destroy your weight loss efforts. Balancing fat intake just contributes to your overall health and well being. It just does. It's gonna lower your bad cholesterol levels and your risk of heart disease. A well balanced diet includes an appropriate amount of healthy fats. Eating healthy fats doesn't necessarily make you fat. Yes, it's a little bit about portion control when it comes to eating fats, but that's okay, because a little goes a long way. Staying hydrated is just essential for making your body function at its peak levels. What we don't want to do, however, is load it with sugary drinks. Water is really all you need. The problem with things like juices and energy drinks and sports drinks is they're just packed with sugars and excess calories that your body doesn't necessarily need or want. I know some people are like, I don't like the taste of water. I don't understand that. It kind of tastes like nothing. If you don't like the taste of your water, it means that your pipes are fucked. I'm sorry. Or your water bottle is full of bacteria or mold or something. Wash it out. Water should taste fine as it is. Water tastes like nothing. Just get used to it. It's water. It's water. It's fine. Drink it. Instead of reaching for sugary drinks, reach for things like herbal teas. Or if you really hate the taste of water, keep a jug of water in your fridge and throw in some orange slices or some lemon slices or strawberries or other fruit and just give it a little, little zhuzh of flavor. 
And stop complaining about how you don't like the flavor of water. It's, it's ridiculous. You're an adult. Drink water. Please? Now let's talk about how some meal planning and prepping can help with your overall health and weight loss plans. Meal planning is a powerful tool that is gonna help you support your weight loss efforts on a plant-based diet. Planning your meals in advance allows you to make intentional food choices, control portion sizes, ensure a well-balanced and nutritionally rich diet, minimize impulsive and unhealthy food choices, and just save stress during a busy week. You know what you're making. You can just figure it out. You don't have to come home and go like, what am I making for dinner and spend half an hour looking around as who we got. Just plan it out in advance. Trust me, it'll save you so much time and stress. You can just be like a robot and go through it. I'm making tacos. I'm making soup. I'm making a salad. Just know it in advance. Make a plan. You're an adult. Make a plan. So how do you make a plan? Here we go. Here's some tips. Make a shopping list. Buy only the things that you need for the meals you're going to make and snacks you want to have, right? It'll keep you focused in the grocery store. You know where you need to go and it'll stop you just grabbing random things and guessing what you need and buying stuff that you might end up wasting down the line. And it'll save you money in the end too. Honestly, just take a few minutes at the end of each week to go through the week coming up and being like, what are the meals I need for the next week? You know, what are some meals I can make that'll have leftovers for lunch potentially? What are some easy breakfasts I can do? And then looking at that list, you get an overview of going, are these balanced? Do I have the right amount of different things on different days? Do I have time to make these things? It just allows you to focus and not have to stress out at the last minute. And on that note, consider doing some batch cooking and prep. Maybe you wanna use one grain for the week, so you just make a shit ton of rice, and that's the grain you're gonna use for a salad and a stir fry. Maybe you know you need peppers in five different recipes. Cut them all up at the same time, and then just put them into a Tupperware container or something in the fridge, and just pull them out as you need them. Same as beans, batch cook your beans, or just get them by the cans if that's easier for you too, right? You can save yourself a lot of time by doing a little bit of prep. Maybe you make one sauce that you can use for a salad dressing and a drizzle on top of a bowl and a spread for a sandwich, right? You can take hummus and thin it out and it can turn it into a salad dressing. Here's a sample meal plan for a day of plant-based eating. So for breakfast, lots of different options here. You can have things like overnight oats, mix them with berries and some nuts. If you wanna make yourself a parfait with some plant-based yogurt or some milk, same thing, you throw in your nuts and your seeds. Make yourself a tofu scramble, a breakfast burrito. For lunch, throw a bunch of greens together with some chopped up vegetables, some chickpeas, or any other bean. Drizzle on some a fat-based dressing that's made with like tahini, or a hummus, or almond butter, or an avocado, like a little guac, whatever you want. Boom, beautiful. A nice healthy soup is good for lunch. Take some toast, put that hummus on it, or like an avocado toast, Throw some vegetables on there, some seeds, some, some tempeh bacon slices. Beautiful sandwich, that's a great lunch. For dinner, make yourself a little stir fry, a soup or a stew, a bowl. Serve these things over like brown rice, or pasta, or quinoa, and just make a delicious little dressing to go on top. And then for snacks throughout the day, chop up an apple, put some nut butter on there if you're not allergic to nuts, some vegetable sticks with some hummus, or just a little handful of nuts and seeds. If you wanna roast those in advance and put some spices on them, bonus points. And then for dessert, you can just have a bowl of fruit or freeze it and put it into a high-speed blender and make yourself like a little sorbet. Top it with some granola or something, delicious. Exercise plays a crucial role in weight loss by helping you burn calories, boost your metabolism, and building lean muscle. It not only enhances your overall fitness, but it's gonna help your body's ability to shed those excess pounds. And when it comes to fueling your workouts, plant-based foods provide excellent sources of energy. Opt for complex carbohydrates like grains, pastas, brown rice, quinoa, potatoes, and fruits. These are gonna provide you sustained energy that are gonna help you get through those workouts. To maximize your weight loss, it's beneficial to combine different types of exercises. So let's explore two key types of exercise. Cardiovascular exercises and strength training. Activities like running, cycling, swimming, and brisk walking are fantastic choices for burning those calories and improving your cardiovascular health. They get your heart rate up, boost your metabolism, 
and contribute to that overall fat loss. Do not forget the importance of building muscle. Strength training exercises such as bodyweight exercises, lifting weights, using resistance bands, all are gonna help you increase your muscle mass. Muscle burns more fat than calories, so the more muscle you have in your body, the faster your calories burn. You don't need to have a fancy gym membership to do either of these things. All of the workouts I do are from videos that I find on YouTube, and all I need to do them are like a yoga mat to keep the floor nice and soft, and a couple of dumbbells and resistance bands. My entire exercise setup cost me less than $100. Remember, consistency is key when it comes to exercise and fitness, so you really just have to find things that you enjoy doing. Whether it's dancing, or hiking, or yoga, or team sports, the goal is to engage in physical activity that you enjoy, that you will do effortlessly on your own without someone having to breathe down your neck and bug you about. If you enjoy it, you'll be motivated to keep doing it. And worst case scenario, just walk. Get a headset, find some podcasts you like, or some music you wanna catch up on, and just go for a walk. If you got a dog, even better, they'll force you to walk. If you can, find a friend or a family member who will join you on this and make it more of a social thing. You'll enjoy it more and the time will pass. All right, so you are now armed with a crazy amount of knowledge to help you lose weight on a plant-based diet. If you found this video inspiring or helpful in any way, hit that thumbs up like button and let me know. Leave a comment below. It's really, really helpful for me to know if this video was helpful for you and what aspects were or weren't. Let me know where you're watching this from and where you are at on your weight loss or plant-based journey. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this, as well as all of my other videos where I do conversations with other people that have lost significant amounts of weights, my what I eat in a week videos, as well as just general recipe videos. Everything on this channel is focused on plant-based goodness. So make sure you hit us up and keep coming back for more. In fact, YouTube really wants you to watch this video right here next. So give it a shot and let us know what you think of that one. Thanks.